reparations for slavery tomorrow. Um, where do you stand on that issue? Do you believe in um, reparations for slavery? And if not, should there be a public apology um, from Congress uh, or from the President in recognition of the theft of yeah, I, I don't think reparations for something that happened 150 years ago for whom none of us currently living are responsible is a good idea. Uh, we tried to deal with our original sin of slavery by fighting a civil war, by passing a landmark civil rights legislation. Uh, we elected an African-American president. I, I think we're always a work in progress in this country, uh, but no one currently alive was responsible for that. And I don't think we should be trying to figure out uh, how to compensate for it. First of all, it'd be pretty hard to figure out who to compensate. We've had waves of immigrants as well who've come to the country and experienced dramatic uh, discrimination of one kind or another. So no, I don't think reparations are good. Hey everyone, it's your man GS002, figured I'd start this video off uh, a little bit differently than I've started in videos past. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff that's transpired since I've uh, last shot a video, so I'm going to try to get everybody up to speed. If you're not up to speed, if you've been living under a rock or something, um, if you do actually live under a rock, I apologize. Uh, but yeah, just try to get everybody up to speed and, uh, you know, just kind of set the, set the frame of discussion set the frame of the discussion from my perspective, uh, what I think about all of this. Now, so what you've heard is a statement from Mitch McConnell, uh, basically discussing um, the reparations hearing that occurred on June 19th, uh, which I believe is the 200, 200th anniversary of the, uh, uh, of the end of the Civil War. Um, now, what Mitch McConnell says, you know, he says that nobody alive has enslaved anyone. Um, the whole reparations discussion, it is it is about slavery, but it is not necessarily about slavery. So slavery was one part of it. However, there's been a lot of systematic discrimination um, from, a, from a socio, uh, from a social and economic perspective. Uh, there's, you know, uh, black codes. There's... Um, you know, sharecropping, uh, there's Jim Crow, which lasted up until, you know, the 1960s. Um, there's even redlining, which just ended, you know, in the late 1980s, you know, 1990s. Um, these are uh, economic measures that have locked black people out, uh, not to mention, um, you know, not granting uh, uh, ADOS, um, you know, land grants that you gave to European peasants that came over here, locking ADOS out of um, out of VA loans, you know, all of these things to set up generational wealth, you know, black people have been locked out of. And so for Mitch McConnell to sit up here and say that he doesn't think it's a good idea, uh, number one is, is bullshit. Uh, number two, it's it's completely disingenuous or maybe that's kind of the same point. But number three, more importantly, um, it doesn't really matter whether no one is alive, no, whether no one alive has enslaved someone. This is not what the main thrust of reparations for slavery and the events after slavery are about. And Mitch McConnell knows that. He's just trying to deflect. Um, number two, when it comes to lineage, uh, I listened to uh, Yvette Carnell and uh, Antonio Moore. Um, and I can tell you that, you know, based on the multitude of podcasts that I listen to from them, uh, it is very, very easy to determine whether someone is ADOS or not. We don't have to worry about, you know, quote unquote, white people receiving reparations. Uh, it's basically going to go based on, you know, how long have you been in the country? You know, um, what you put down as your race, you know, uh, it's going to be, it's very easy to determine the lineage of someone that was affected by, you know, slavery and the events that, that occurred after slavery. You know, all of these white politicians, they don't understand, uh, and a lot of the black ones too, the Congressional Coon Caucus is another one, um, 
a lot of these politicians, they don't understand, or maybe they're just being intentionally dense, that, you know, uh, African Americans, ADOS, I really, I need to stop saying African Americans, ADOS, Foundational Black Americans, we have been targeted specifically by racist economic and social policies. So we need policies targeted at us specifically to help us get out of this mess that the United States put us in. Okay. Now, regardless of what you want to say, okay, there's a lot of ADOS that, that dislike America. Fact of the matter is America is home. I'm ADOS. I fully acknowledge that the American flag is my flag. My flag, my country is America. I have no connection to Africa. Okay. We are what you would call a lost tribe. Um, and so, you know, we need to, we need to start accepting that and we need to stop. And I'm not saying that we're guilty of this, but all of these people that come out with all of these red herrings about, you know, oh, well, you know, no one is alive that, in, that enslaved you, you know, and you're African. So you really need to go back to Africa. You know, these two things aren't necessarily related, but these are arguments that I hear a lot being made by uh, racist uh, white people and uh, other uh, pro-blackity blacks. And um, again, these people just need to get over the fact that, hey, you're American, you know, America has wronged you and uh, it's time to, uh, to take our fight directly to the country that has wronged us. Um, so now this is uh, Mitch McConnell's statement uh, before the, uh, the, the reparations at uh, the HR 40 uh, hearing. Um, and now Mitch McConnell came out a couple of days later. And I don't know if you guys can see that the headline CNN politics, Obama and I are both descendants of slaveholders. So somebody did some digging into Mitch McConnell's background found they found out that his family owned at least 14 slaves they probably owned more than that i mean it's it's conjecture of me to say that they own more than that but that is what they owned at least um and i believe that president obama has also said that you know on his mother's side his 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 father is from kenya um his mother is from kansas a white woman from kansas and on his mother's side uh they own slaves now my understanding is that, you know, Obama uh, was asked multiple times or not necessarily multiple times, but he was asked about reparations. He also thought it was a bad idea. Um, I completely disagree with President Obama on that. I've, I've stated on my channel numerous times that I think President Obama, like at the time when he was president, like I thought it was cool. You know, I voted for him twice, especially in 2008. I mean, I was really, really wrapped up in the Obama presidency. And I, I was thinking at the time that, yes, having a black person president, you know, that is like the ultimate, uh, that's the ultimate way for black people to get ahead in America. But that is, I was brainwashed. I mean, that is not what black people need. You know, if you look at what, what plagues black people, it is, uh, it is an accrued disadvantage over decades and decades and decades, over hundreds of years even. Um, you know, I think that if, the events that didn't take place after slavery, the black codes and all this other stuff that I was telling you about earlier, if all that stuff didn't take place and if black people were allowed to prosper, you know, black people will be fairly close to, I think, whites in terms of their uh, wealth standing. I mean, we did have a black Wall Street. We had Wilmington, you know, uh, all these other, you know, we had Rosewood, all these successful uh, black towns that basically made something out of nothing. And they were lost due to, you know, white violence. Um, so, and then on top of that, you know, uh, white, uh, or I, let, me, let me rephrase that, economic uh, racism, economic segregation. So it's really that, that, again, that accrued disadvantage, that is really where I'm coming from in terms of, you know, being a proponent for, uh, for reparations for foundational uh, black Americans. Now, in this in this article, uh, Mitch McConnell, you know, again, he says that Obama and I are both descendants of slaveholders. I've explained what he meant by that. Um, and, you know, having Obama in 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 the presidency, um, it was a good thing for America because it caused America to grow. 
but it was also a black thing. It was it was a, a black thing. It was a bad thing for black America because Obama, uh, if, if we were going to get any type of, you know, landmark legislation like reparations or whatever, when Obama was president, you know, that was really the time to do it. And so, you know, now people that really understand the political climate, you know, we've been doing as 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 ADOS, we've been doing bad politics, you know, especially our parents, the baby boomers. They've been doing really bad politics for a very, very long time. All they got was um, was integration. You know, they got their they got their pensions. Now they're on Social Security and, and, and Medicare. And all they want to do is just die a peaceful death. They are not even paying for their sins. It is the Gen Xers and really the black millennials that are paying for their failure. But Obama, in many in many ways, you know, we let this we let this immigrant uh, man come over here. You know, we let him wear the mantle of of ADOS. He stole our identity, and at the end of the day, he doesn't even really identify with us. He identifies with like African black, you know, and then uh, white people because he was able to access whiteness through his uh, through his white grandparents. And so, you know, this is what is so important about properly vetting. Um, properly vetting candidates, you know, that's why going forward, you know, like I said, I listened to Yvette Carnell and Tone. Yvette has said multiple times, the 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 social capital bank of, of ADOS is closed. The social bank of foundational black Americans is closed. We need to guard that because that lifestyle, that that is really our IP. That is the only thing that we have because we don't have any wealth. Okay, that's all that we have. We have to safeguard that, okay? If anybody has a legitimate claim against America, if, any, if, if America owes anybody, quote unquote, the bag, it is definitely ADOS and nobody else, okay? Not no fucking LGBTs, not no immigrants, you know, stop talking to me about all these immigrants at the border in these, in these camps. You know, I'm sorry that these immigrants are at the border, they're in the camps, you know, but you are trying to enter a country illegally. So, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Like if I try to go down into Mexico uh, illegally, something bad is going to happen to me too. So, um, or to me as well. So, you know, it's like, sorry, not sorry. You know what I'm saying? And so at the end of the day, like we are, at the end of the day, we are putting non, uh, non-citizens ahead of, we're putting the, the trials and tribulations of non-citizens ahead of those that are citizens. And to me, that is just, that's really fucked up. You know, we have to put our own countrymen first. You know, I'm ADOS, I'm here, I pay taxes, and I'll be damned if I let some immigrant come over here and, and overstep me, you know, not paying a lick of taxes and, and have their hand out talking about, oh, give me, give me free stuff you know, freaking welfare sponges. We're not going for that. It's time for black people to be politically selfish. And again, so what I was going to step to uh, next, you know, so we had the first couple of debates after the HR 40 thing. And, uh, you know, Marianne Williamson, I've, I think I've spoken about her before. She's a white lady. She was on the main debate stage. That was pretty awesome. And she brought up, you know, the whole, her, her main, uh, focus is uh, reparations for, for ADOS, uh, foundational black Americans, um, American descendants of slaves. And immediately, you know, she brought that up in the debate. And immediately after she brought that up, it looked like her mic was cut. And then Kamala Harris launched into this tirade against Joe Biden. Um, Kamala Harris, uh, you know, her, her record is, is, is shit. Um, the woman was a district attorney. Uh, then she was attorney general, if I'm not mistaken, of California. Uh, then she was a senator for, of California. And there was just all kinds of, of fuckery. You know, I've heard all kinds of like, she supported all kinds of crazy truancy laws, you know, locking uh, mainly uh, black people up, you know, because their kids are skipping school. Now, I don't, I don't think kids being truant is a good thing. But I think that if you're in a position of power, you know, you could show some empathy to black people if you claim to be a black person. This woman is half uh, Indian, you know, uh, a quarter Jamaican and a quarter Scottish Irish because her, her dad, I believe, was was biracial. Uh, both of her parents uh, have have high levels of college 
Um, her mother is a PhD. Her dad, I think, has his master's degree. Uh, her mother was a, like a research doctor, and her dad was a university professor. Um, so this woman comes from, she comes from privilege. Um, and, you know, she's trying to kind of be like, you know, everything to everybody. And, uh, you know, it looks, I want to, I, I want to pat, you know, ADOS on the back. Uh, it looks like, you know, we're definitely uh, protecting our identity, our racial identity, uh, much better this time uh, than we were against Obama. Um, I want to go down to this one particular point. So, yeah, this article came out uh, July 2nd, so it's a little old. Uh, today's the 11th, but uh, let's see. So this is right after the first Democratic debate. So in the latest poll, Biden's support among Black American Democratic voters shrunk to 31% from 48% in the June poll. Harris, on the other hand, saw her support among Black demographic voters grow to 27% from 11% in the June poll. Okay, uh, the June poll numbers on African American voters were provided to NBC by Quinnipiac. So, 27% um, of, of Black Democratic voters uh, support Kamala Harris. That is still, I think that is still really, really good for that number to be so low, considering, um, you know, how how shitty her record is, and she's kind of like deflecting to to race and and lineage um you know and of course roland martin has been defending her he's a he's a fat piece of shit dude's dude's pathetic um but but one thing that the democrats are doing is they're basically because black people are saying okay we don't like your record and you're not one of us we're basically saying we need to see a black agenda from you because we're not going to let obama 2.0 happen again because if we let if we let Obama 2.0 happen again, like the Democrats are in gaming us, like it is, we're done, you know, we're done. It's it's over, you know. I've discussed on my channel before how uh, Black American uh, ADOS uh, income is approaching zero. I think by 2053 or something, it's going to be approaching zero. So if we're going to act, we got to act now. And the best way that we have to lift everybody up is through reparations for ADOS. OK. Um, and like I said, I want to pat everybody on the back for the job that you're doing. You're doing an excellent job of getting the message out there. And uh, yeah, the Democratic Party, they're shook. They're scared. And they should be, um, you know, personally, like I am not going to vote uh, for, for president. I am going to bubble something in because I don't want my vote to, you know, get counted towards somebody else. So what I'll probably do is just like bubble in like the right end category and like I'll either write in like Marianne Williamson's name or, you know, I'll write hashtag ADOS or something like that or, you know, hashtag no, no reparations, no vote. But yeah, I mean, we're beyond no black agenda, no vote. We are like, it's like no reparations, no vote. Um, so anyway, I know that I hit a lot of stuff. Um, I don't do very many videos, but, you know, I just had to kind of get my thoughts out there in the ether because I heard a lot of people talking about lineage and, and they're not really framing the conversation uh, correctly, in, in my uh, opinion. Again, I don't really care about Kamala Harris's lineage, and I don't think that anybody that is a serious supporter of ADOS or serious uh, foundational Black American, I don't think they really care about Kamala Harris's uh, lineage either. Uh, but it, it, if you don't have the lineage, because that shows that you support us at a ground roots level, if you don't have the lineage, then you need to show us a Black agenda. You know, so the fact that she, you know, is deflecting to all this other bullshit, you know, that that tells me that she's got nothing but a trick bag for us. So, again, folks, don't fall for the trick bag. And, you know, you're doing a great job. Uh, again, this is GH002 uh, coming back at you with another video. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, if you want to add to this, to in, if you want to add to the discussion, uh, feel free to uh, comment, you know, and of course, be sure to like, share, subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.